What's up guys, it's Mark. Everyone is acting like OLED is the perfect technology, but after testing several panels recently, I've realized it's not that simple. Today, I'm giving you the five biggest reasons to buy an OLED and the five brutal reasons why it might be a total mistake. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know about this new panel type and if OLEDs are even worth your hard-earned money. The biggest reason to buy an OLED is a number most people ignore, 0.03 milliseconds. That is the response time of this Aorus FO27 Q2 panel. Brands love to market one millisecond on IPS panels, but that's usually a lie achieved through heavy overdrive that causes ghosting. OLED is different. Each pixel is its own light source and they can switch states nearly instantly. This means even at 240 Hertz, an OLED looks clearer than IPS with the same refresh rate. If you play fast-paced shooters like Valorant or Apex, the motion clarity is life-changing. You can actually see the enemy clearly while you're flicking your mouse. It's not just a visual upgrade, it's a performance upgrade that makes everything else feel sluggish. My second pro is the contrast, and it's the reason OLEDs look so much better than IPS or VA panels. Why? Because OLEDs turn their pixels completely off, your black levels are literally zero. In a game like Cyberpunk, shadows aren't just dark grey, they are completely black. This creates a level of depth that makes the image look almost three-dimensional. When you combine this with HDR and a 10-bit colour depth, you're getting a pop that makes every other non-OLED screen in your house look broken by comparison. It's the difference between looking at a screen and looking through a window. That's the best way I can put it. Next, number three, I have mentioned already HDR. Most monitors try to imitate it, but they don't have the dimming zones to back it up, so the whole screen just looks washed out. OLED is the king of HDR because every single pixel, all 3.6 million of them, is a dimming zone. When a light shines in a dark scene, there is zero blooming or halo effect around it. If you haven't played an HDR game on a panel like this, you haven't truly seen what modern graphics are capable of. Reason number four is viewing angles. If you're a multitasker or someone who likes to lean back in your chair, OLED is a dream. IPS panels have a glow when viewed from an angle, and VA panels have colour shift where everything looks weirdly yellow or blue if you aren't perfectly centred, although they're a lot better than dreaded TM panels. OLEDs, on the other hand, stay perfectly consistent. Whether you're sitting dead centred or off to the side, the colours and contrast stay identical. This is why OLED is becoming the gold standard for editors and creators who need absolute accuracy across the entire panel, even at the very edges of the screen. And the final pro is actually specific to the Aorus panel, the tactical features. Beyond just being thin and light, this monitor has a dedicated tactical switch. With one press, it can swap the resolution to a 24-inch window. This is huge because you get the immersive 27-inch OLED for your story-driven games, and then hit one button to transform it into a pro-tier 24-inch competitive screen for ranked matches. It's a level of versatility that older monitors just don't offer. Now, before we get to the five reasons not to buy, I want to share the one thing manufacturers don't put on the box, the finish. There is a massive debate between glossy and matte OLEDs. This FO27Q2 panel uses a specialized coating that tries to balance both, but you need to know your room. In a dark room, a glossy OLED looks incredible, but if you have a window behind you, the true black everyone loves will turn into a purple reflection of your own face. It's a hidden con that many reviewers ignore, but it can ruin the experience experience before you even turn the monitor on. Right, con number one has to be potential burn-in. I don't care what the marketing says, OLED is an organic material and it will degrade over time. If you use your monitor for eight hours of work and then four hours of gaming with a HUD, you are a prime candidate for image retention. While most OLED panels have features that help, by shifting pixels and dimming logos, the anxiety of image retention is still the worst part of owning an OLED. Turning your monitor off every time you leave the room can be a bit of a pain. You shouldn't have to babysit it a thousand dollar piece of tech just to make sure it doesn't break itself. With that said, we have several other OLED panels here and both haven't shown any signs of the dreaded burn-in yet, even after hours of gaming, but the fear of burn-in happening is enough to mention it as a serious drawback, although it still wouldn't put me off buying one as the pros definitely outweigh the cons. 
My second con has to be text clarity. Because of the sub-pixel layout on many OLED panels, text doesn't look as sharp as it does on an IPS. If you're a coder, a writer, or someone who spends all day in Excel, you may notice a colour fringing on the edges of letters. Some people don't notice it, but for others it causes immediate eye strain. If you're buying this monitor primarily for work and only gaming on the side, this is a massive deal breaker that you need to be aware of. My third con is sustained brightness. While OLEDs have amazing peak brightness, they can't sustain a bright white screen like other panel types can. If you open a full white web page or a Word document, the auto brightness limiter will kick in and dim the whole screen to protect the panel. It's a jarring shift that can be very distracting. Also, if your room has a lot of natural light, an OLED will often feel dim compared to a high-end IPS that can just blast through the glare. Gaming can be a problem as well. The auto dimming feature was so distracting on my TV, I ended up turning it off in the service menu. Right everyone, the fourth con has to be the price. In 2026, the OLED tax is still very much a reality. You can get a world-class 4K 144 Hertz IPS panel for almost half the price. You have to ask yourself if perfect blacks and a 0.03 millisecond response time is worth an extra $500. For a pro player, the answer is yes. For the average gamer who just wants a nice screen, that money is probably better spent on a GPU upgrade. That will actually improve your frame rates. Finally, reason 5. Longevity. An IPS monitor can easily last 10 years without losing its edge. We simply don't have enough data yet to say the same for this generation of OLED gaming monitors. You are trading long-term reliability for short-term visual perfection. If you're the type of person who upgrades your setup every 3-5 to five years, go for it. But if you want a monitor that you can buy once and forget, OLED is a gamble that might not pay off. One thing to note moving forward that might make this monitor obsolete soon, or the way I look at it, much cheaper to buy, is the new Tandem OLEDs releasing very soon. Right now, most OLED monitors use a single layer of organic material, but the industry is shifting towards stacking two layers of OLEDs on top of each other. This is the technology Apple just put into the iPad Pro, and the technology is coming to gaming monitors this year, and I can't wait to try one for myself. The benefits of tandem OLEDs are undeniable. Because you have two layers working together, you can hit double the brightness without stressing the pixels. This effectively solves the automatic brightness limiter problem I mentioned earlier. You get that high-end mini LED brightness, but with perfect OLED blacks. But the real pro is the lifespan, because each layer only has to work half as hard compared to the previous generation of OLEDs at the same brightness. So the risk of burn-in is significantly reduced. Okay everyone, OLEDs have big drawbacks that a potential buyer needs to be made aware of. If you are a hardcore gamer who plays in a darkish room and wants the absolute best experience, this FO27Q2 is incredible and I highly recommend it. But if you're a professional who works in a bright office and wants a screen that lasts forever, stick to LCD. They're a workhorse that can be left on a static screen without any issues. Before the video finishes, I want to hear your take, are the blacks worth the risk? Drop a comment below. If this helped you make a decision, hit the like button. If you could kindly check out my other videos, that would really help support the channel. I suggest checking these videos out as they're some of my best work. My name's Mark, goodbye.